Well, welcome everyone to Father's Voice. Today we have a incredible man of God and a good friend to both myself and Raul that is here with us. Father's Voice is sort of this idea that we want to encourage the voice of fathers to be heard in society. I think in many ways our society wants to mute down or quiet the voice of men, especially fathers. And so this is our opportunity to sort of voice from our heart why we lead and what we do, sort of sort of our motivation, the reasons behind why what we the choices we make. So today our guest is none other than Pastor Obed Martinez. Mm -hmm. And what a delight to have him here with us on this amazing day. Absolutely. What a joy to be here with you guys. Come on. He's yeah, preparing for a marathon, so, so <laughs> he told us prior to starting up that he had ran 14 miles. So in two weeks, he's going to run a full 26 and a half mile yes, marathon. Yes, yes. Let's do it. Come on. <laughs> 50 years old, too. Come on. Dang, hey. That's good. It's really good. You all feeling strong are, and everything? Yeah, all things are possible, right? Amen. So, yeah, no, it's good. You know, I think I think the older you get, the more you want to accomplish. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's a good personal, per, per, personal journey for me. Yeah, I think when, it, as you get older too, you know, when you're 50, or as, you, as the clock keeps ticking, I'm always thinking, how am I using my time? Oh yeah, because it's not, it's it's limited. Mm -hmm. None of us here live forever, and so there's almost a gift of the reality: our life doesn't last forever. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think in your 20s you want to get there fast. Mm -hmm. Your 30s you can think you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> your your 40s you realize you can't. Not at all. And then I think at your 50s you just want to. You just want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's what it's all about. So, no, I, I, I'm enjoying my season of my life right now, man. It's, it's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. It's yeah. awesome. And when did you, when did you get that idea? You know, um, I've, have you always wanted to do a marathon, or you just? Yeah, you know, I recently? think now, man. You know, I think in life, you, you, you accomplish certain things, right? And I think that you go, man, I've accomplished all these goals for everybody else mm -hmm. and i think now you're sitting there going okay man i i want to accomplish some goals for myself mm -hmm. and um you know i've i've you know being in the ministry i've you know spoken at you know some of the greatest places done the greatest you know been to the greatest nations greatest churches i mm -hmm. I, I i just think now man i really just want to fulfill some dreams that are more personal yeah and, and so I, yeah i've always wanted to do it. so i'm going to do that la marathon qualify for the Boston Marathon, <clears throat> and then do the New York Marathon, and then uh, do the, the the London Marathon, and then I'll be done. Dang. So, so is that all, all over the course of the next year, twelve uh, months, no, or that'll be a couple the years? Next, over the next four or five years? Yeah, wow. yeah. So kind of you know, hopefully, maybe just depending on my body feels. If I could do two a year, that's fine. But you know, right now, realistically, let's just do one a year. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, so take us back, man. Take us back to your childhood. Uh, a little bit about how you grew up. Um, uh, what was what was your childhood like? Um, Tell us about your family yeah. as a child. So yeah, well, my family dynamics are, were crazy. Um, you know, come I come from two parents uh, that were in the ministry, and uh, and then my father had five children really quick. You know, they didn't have nothing to do back in those days. No right? TV, no nothing. No TV, nothing. And so Just uh, love. He, he went into business. And my dad, coming from... A pastor's home my mother coming from a missionary's home you know my dad had this idea that you know I I could be a, a more of a contributor to the church if 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 you know I go out and make money and do business mm -hmm. and 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 he did and I always say my dad was almost this this uh, pastor's dream member you know what I mean L understands the pastor wants to make money and then you know, my father, man, um, you know, started to really soar in business and, and you know, I always say, you know, with success comes a lot of options. Mm -hmm. And my dad had multiple options. He was young. He was good looking. Um, you know, um, you know, he had only been with one woman. And so it, 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 it that led into this lifestyle that my dad uh, left my mother. I was How old the, were you? I was 11. Hmm. And um, and so immediately, you know, I could remember, you know, uh, you know, putting away my GI Joes, man, and grabbing the lawnmower, mm -hmm. and you know, from boy to man, yeah, taking trash out. You know what I mean? And Were you the oldest? I was the oldest boy. Oldest boy. And um, and so, you know, I, 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 as you said, Pastor Nate, I, I, I went from one day being a, a young boy mm -hmm. to being a man. 
And um, and I think that's what kind of led to my demise, you know, almost like going down this whole path of drugs and alcohol mm-hmm. and different things like that. And, you know, I look back and I go, yeah, you know, my dad, he wasn't absent from my life. You know, he was there as my, still my coach. You know, he was, he, he made sure we had a roof over our head. He bought a car for every one of his children at 16. He, he was there at our house every day. He just didn't sleep there. So, so would you say that spiritually he abdicated his role while in the, everything else he still cared about you? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And, and, and my mom took that role. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, but you know, I, I, you know, now I look back and I go, man, you know, what, what really, I think, uh, happened to my life was um, I was absent from direction. Mm -hmm. And I I look at a, I think that's why I'm so passionate about that. You know, I'm so passionate about um, discipleship, directing people's lives, giving them an idea of what their future can look like. Because man, you know, when, when the absentee of a father is just not something that you know, is an emotional setback, but it's also a directional setback. Mm -hmm. You know, where do I go? Who is gonna speak into the future and the potential in my own life? Yeah. And um and so that's what happened and and um you know, got involved in drugs and alcohol and then at sixteen years old came out of jail, went to mom invited him got in got to go to a youth camp, gave my heart to Christ and and So at eleven years old you become you go from boy to man. Yeah. You do maybe a year or two doing good, and you fall off somewhere along the way in high yeah, school. Yeah, I just I just fell off, man. I I um, you know this this whole idea of having to grow up so fast, and you know what's interesting, man, is that you know, we're, and we're all in this this space of helping people, right? Mm-hmm. And I think really you can almost see that a lot of men are still acting like boys, mm-hmm. certainly. And there's this validation that they mm-hmm. didn't get when they were younger because mm-hmm. that father figure was absent mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and so and 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 so i think for me it was a switch you go from being a a boy to a to the to the you know the man of your house and i remember my dad with the suitcase in the hallway tells me you need to be the man of the house wow at and 11, I'm, years I'm old. 11 years old before not he ready leaves. for that yeah before mm-hmm. he leaves you need to be the man of the house mm-hmm. and um and, 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 and I can't tell you over the years, 30 years now being in ministry, I can't tell you how many guys I've met mm-hmm. that had that same thing that their dads told them, hey, you have to be the man of the house and they're still a teenager. Yeah. And I, I got a 13 year old son and I would never expect him to Not be the man of the house, man. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and um, so yeah, that was, uh, I think that that was really uh, something that uh, really, had a setback in my mm-hmm. life. Yeah. And so would you say, so within about a year or two, you go to gangs? Is that, is that uh, yeah, sort of accurate? Absolutely. You know, my, my, my older cousin um, lived around the corner and, you know, he was, he was just a role model to me. You know, he was a, he was a, 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 a you know, an athlete and, you know, he played baseball, football, basketball, same thing as me. Um, I kind of always felt like I was following his footsteps since I never had a bigger brother. And, um, you know, he taught me really everything, man. And so I was very advanced in sports because I've always played with older people. I played with him. So he was throwing 80, 90 miles per hour. Man, I was I was nine years old hitting wow. those things, you know? Mm. So I was always advanced in that area in sports, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, he turns to gangs and drugs. And we lived in a very good neighborhood. Like the cops, they would never come to our neighborhood. Was he more like a like a fa- uh, exactly. big brother or like a father because of brother. figure? I mean, yeah, like a- more like a big brother, okay. I would sit there and say. And, and um, but he started, you know, selling drugs and, you know, he buys these nice cars and all the girls are at his the house. Life. And, yeah. you know, next thing you know, man, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 11 years old and, you know, I got my friends, we got a little bikes, and he goes, you know, hey, here's some walkie talkies. And you know, all we need you guys to do is play, man. But if you ever see the cops come, just <laughs> radio in. Just radio <laughs> in, right? And they'd hand us 20 bucks a okay. day. All right. So I was making 20 bucks a day. So back in those days, man, a pack of now laters was 10 cents. Yeah, 20 bucks a day. You know what I mean? $20 like was $20. Bucks. <laughs> that man, I, I, was, I was eating well, <laughs> going to the indoor swap meet buying candy i was the king of the yard you know and so it 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 
it gave me this validation, man, that mm. I didn't get from my father at that time. Yeah. And um, how how far um, in direction? So, so he was he was out of your life, but he was in in and out. How, no, how like often he, would he, he show was, up? He was there day? every day. Oh, okay, so okay. he was yeah. still at the home. No, he wasn't sleeping there. Okay, he wasn't. But he was just there every day. Came by, said hello to everybody. Oh, okay, and, okay. So I. I that, and your that, mom allowed that, right? Yeah. yeah you good. know, my mom would always go, that's your dad. You still got to love him. Whatever yeah. happened between him and I is between him and I. It's, it's not it's not your guys' it's battle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's our repercussion, though. For sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so yeah. So, that that's kind of what what took place. And now, Pastor, um, you, you've, I've always seen you as very mentally strong, mentally tough. For sure. and And I'm sure that that part of your life really helped help with that building that mental mindset but would you say how how did it affect your brothers and sisters everybody takes it in differently yeah and, and what role did you play in well, definitely affected or, my yeah. brothers you mm -hmm. know my you had two brothers I have two brothers one yeah. passed away but you know yeah it affected them tremendously mm -hmm. you know what i mean um again having the absentee of a father mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. there's no male figure in your home and so the only uh ones they were close to were, were they were close to my mom and so the femininity side of them for sure you know was um very 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 active mm -hmm. you know where there was no masculinity because it wasn't being poured into mm -hmm. them from a man and so my brother you know both brothers started to deal with homosexuality mm -hmm. and, and how old know, are they so you're 11 i'm and they're... 11 they're nine and seven yeah you know and so they start dabbling with homosexuality and different things like that and you know, thank God, you know, the Lord has has dealt with them. But, you know, the thing is, man, is that, you know, it's not like that's something they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, man, when I don't have that masculine voice in my life, For sure. you know what I mean? Then um, all I'm ever going to know is the femininity side mm -hmm. of, of, of what nurtures me. And so I kind of always equate it like, you know, it's like most believers, right? They know the Lamb of God. But they don't know the line of the tribe of Judah, mm -hmm. right? And so that to me is there has to be a healthy balance and why I think God made male and female because he needs both of them in the house. For sure. And so so then you're saying by like what age sixteen, that's when you got incarcerated. You so you run with the gang. Yeah, you, you so between to... thirteen and sixteen, man, I was just walk, running the streets, you know, out of school. You know, by this time my mom lost control of me. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. and um, and um, you know the the streets just got the best of me, man. I was just, you know, um, I've always been a go getter. To me, I was. I, so you, you dealing know, drugs and doing the yeah, whole thing, I'm sure. drugs, making money. Yeah, making money. You know, dropping out of school, not you know, and and just thinking I can get more. I can get more. I can do more. I can have more. I can get more. And um, and eventually, you know, it drove me to, to prison. Mm -hmm. So you went to jail for how long? Short time. I, I was I got caught in a DEA drug raid, man. So, um, so I, I I spent six months in jail, um, which I wasn't the one that even sold the narcotics. I was just around, mm -hmm. and 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 so they got me. Mm -hmm. So so you mentioned that you then got out of jail. You gave your life to the Lord. Can you talk about that experience? I love that story. And also uh, talk about how your pastor, youth pastor, went back to the streets with you yeah. and, and walked the line. That's, that's a yeah, great so, story. Yeah, so, you that know, I, I landed up, you know, coming out of jail on a Monday. My mom, both my mom and dad picked me up, mm -hmm. which I was really shocked because in those six months, my dad never visited me, you know. And um, so I land up going to youth group on a Wednesday, they, they had a camp that Friday. It was sold out. But, you know, a great youth pastor always does it, right? Mm -hmm. One more space, it's right? Really, yeah. You know? <laughs> and he did that. I landed up going, giving my heart to Jesus. So is it Holy Spirit kind of Jesus? Or yeah, is it more it like, just like turn your heart it, up to God? You know what, man? It was, you know, during praise and worship, the camp just started Friday night. And I got there late. Um, and, and minded because... I knew church. I, I know what's supposed to happen at these places, right? And I just was not interested in in it, you know, and anything like that. And 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 and, and, and the reason, probably the reason why, was because, you know, I saw the way the church dealt with my mom, and, and that that was I don't in a negative light or positive. In a negative light, okay, you know what I mean. And um, so I landed up. Um, walking in late i'm in the back the youth pastor grabs me and he goes hey man i got a seat in the front row and i'm like no i'm I, that that place is packed out 
He's like, no, 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 I got you. I got that. I got that for you. I was like, oh, man, all right, I'll go. So I go in the front. And I mean, it's weird. You know, all the holy rollers are in the front row, right? <laughs> you know, so I'm just like, man, this is weird right here. So anyways, man, I landed up. You know, they were singing this song, More Love, More Power, More of You in My Heart. And the the the, the worship leaders had everyone lift their hands. And I, I wasn't accustomed to that. And so... I didn't want to feel left out, so I just did, and it was like the Holy Spirit just hit me, man. Mm. I mean, no one touched me, no one prayed for me, and I feel, and I always say this, everybody has their own encounter, mm -hmm. but I feel like that had to be mine, mm. because I was always cynical, you know, I was, um, you know, cynical, man, mm -hmm. you know. You know, I'd be in church growing up, and, and these people would start, you know, prophesying, and I would tell my mom, I bet you any money the pastor gives them these cards, <laughs> you know what I mean? And he has them memorize them, yeah. you know what I mean? Because there's no way they can be that accurate. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. that's not, it's no way, mom, I'm trying to tell you, you are being brainwashed. Oh no, mijo, it's the Holy Spirit. I'm mm. like, nah, 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 nah. They ain't getting me like that, no. right? <laughs> so, so I felt like the Lord, if he was gonna do anything for me, he had to do it himself that there could be nobody that can touch me nothing yeah. so next thing you know i felt like i went to sleep i woke up i literally did i'm i can't stop crying uh my tongue is just going off i'm trying to bite my tongue to stop it it's all holy spirit it's yeah, all holy yeah, spirit yeah, right cool. and the youth pastor walks up to me he, he gets on his knees he's crying and he doesn't say like you know, praise the Lord, or man, I'm gonna pray for you. He just looked at me and said, and mind is he knows nothing about me. He just said, the girlfriend you've had for three years, you need to break up with her. Ooh. And I was like, what? And again, I'm thinking, my mom told him. <laughs> you know, my mom told him. <laughs> you you know, no, 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 yeah. there are secret God. conversations. Yeah. And so I land up Let me going tell you back. About my son. <laughs> yeah, I land up going back, and you know, I first question I asked my mom is, "Did you tell the youth pastor?" No, he, I hadn't told him nothing. Holy Spirit! So I landed up going to my girlfriend's house, breaking up with her. Was she I, bad or a church girl? No, no, we. She was worldly. Worldly, you know. Worldly. Yeah, she was with me during jail. That's what I felt bad because she had been with me, man, through my uh, bad times. Oh, she time. kept with you, yeah. Yeah, so I break up with her, and and I remember leaving her house. And I'm like, what did I just do? Like, what did I do, man? And I remember that my pastor lived near that park. So I landed up going to the park and I had been to his house before and I remember the backyard. So I jumped the fence into his backyard. I didn't even think about it. And so I come down the side and I can hear him whistling. And um, I come out the side gate and he's like, oh, I said, man, sorry, I, I was in the park. I remember this was your house. I jumped over and he's washing his car and he goes, well, I'm glad you're here. And I'm like, you're glad I'm here. He goes, yeah, because 10 minutes ago, the Holy Spirit told me to put out a chair because someone was going to come. Wow. And I'm like, oh man, this is wild, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I said, well, I just broke up with my girlfriend, you know, and I'm crying. And he's like, oh, bet everything's gonna be okay, and you know, God has a plan for you, and all this kind of stuff. And he goes, hey, I'm going to a conference in two weeks, and um, you know, my son's going, and you know, we've been kind of thinking, who's gonna go with him? Why don't you come? Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know. And he goes, no, 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 we'll pay for it. I'll tell your mom. So I land up, he lands up taking me to this conference. And two weeks later, and we're in this big old arena, and now all these greats are there, man. I don't know none of them. And this one guy goes on stage and he goes, all right, everybody, grab your hand, grab the hand next to you, because the Holy Spirit's gonna hit you. <coughs> and I'm like, hit me? What does that mean? Well, the Holy Spirit's gonna hit me, man. So, you know, they were playing the music, and you know everyone's like, you know, they're they're just they're just, Benny Hinn one, yeah, they're just it's worshiping Benny Hinn, man. Yeah, and this dude goes fire. And again, mind this, Obed Martinez was a cynical young man Skeptical, in, yeah. in church. Mm -hmm. And I flew three rows, literally three rows. And I 
I, I land on some people. My, my pastor's wife comes running towards me. And I looked at her, I said, what the bleep is happening? <laughs> and they're like, she's like, the Holy Spirit hit you. I'm like, no, they turned up those speakers, man. <laughs> That's the problem, because he yelled at the end. Yeah. No, it was the Holy Spirit. And it was, and I was done. You know, yeah. it was over. The whole, you know, he said, if you you're want all this, in, he says, if you want this, you need to come up. I ran up, man. I didn't even think about it. I was like, wow. yes, you yeah. know, and I felt like I had to go through that to believe it. Yeah. Not knowing what my future was going to look like, but just, okay, no one can convince me not. Mm -hmm. So then that's when I realized I, I got to be all in, dude. Mm -hmm. So I came back from this conference and I told my youth pastor, look it. They're going to get me. They're going to get me, man. And, you know, I don't want to be caught slipping out of gas station and these guys jump out the car and get me. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, let's go. I'm like, what do you mean let's go? He goes, let's go. Let's go to them. Well, he was a black belt teacher in karate. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a sensei. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, they're, 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 they're not going to mess with you. And I'm like, okay. I go, no, no, they're going to jump me out. Okay, no, no, you'll be all right. So we go, all the boys are there, and you could just tell they're mad at me. And I go, guys, this is for real. What Change gang is this called? What's the name of your gang? It's called Eastside Payne, Ghost Town Eastside Payne. And he was on. like, you know, I, I, I'm I'm done, man. I, I'm i done, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to live for God and yeah, and all this kind of stuff. And my youth pastor was like, you know, just just do what you have to do to them, but don't go too far. And they're like, well, what are you going to do? He's like, well, just don't go too far. Just do what you got to do. And then they were like, you know what, man? You know, um, 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 you know, we ought to beat you down too. He's like, oh, no, no, y'all don't want to mess with me. No, you got to. He goes, you know what? No, I'll take a beating. I'll, I'll go through it with him. Hmm. So my youth pastor went through it with me. Wow. Didn't throw one, one punch at these guys. He had a bloody nose. I had broken ribs, all this stuff, man. And we're like, we let him go to the hospital together. Yeah, it was nuts, man. And, and that That's right crazy. there was like, okay, no one's ever done that for me. Wow. And I felt like that was the beginning of the restoration of manhood in my life. Wow. Mm -hmm. That it made sense now. Okay, Jesus did this for me. Mm -hmm. And my youth pastor That's did wild. this for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, man. And so in a matter of months, guys started coming around. So my youth pastor was like, well, hey, mm -hmm. let's, you know, let's do a karate day. Well, all these guys started coming. And these are hardcore dudes. And man, he was just like, he snapped his wrist, hit this dude in the chest. My this dude flew back mm. and won the respect of everybody, right? <laughs> and there just became this revival that took place, man. In the neighborhood. In my neighborhood. Gang. From the gang, bro. man. Wow. Absolutely. And, you know, four of my best friends landed up going on to college, man. Mm. And, you know, living wow. a dream. That's you good. know, and so it was it's it, it's it, it was it was a journey man and yeah. and and then that day came when i i came home and um my dad was there and he's talking to my mom and and um you know i just said dad i you know you don't deserve it but i forgive you and i'm not going to hold on to this there's you know i'm not going to blame you for anything uh, because those were my choices, you know, even though um, I had to grow up fast. Um, and I felt like that was one of the moments that um, started to free my dad, mm -hmm. you know, to the point that before my mom passed away, you know, they got back together. They had a renewing of their vows. And I really saw the restoration of a marriage like I've never seen in my wow. life. And, That's good. and my dad... I never After forget. how many years? So they were separated they were for 10 separated plus years? They were separated for my 10 plus years. And I'll never wow. forget my dad telling me at my mom's funeral. He said, you know, I hope you will love your wife the way I loved your mom the last eight years. Mm. And uh, and so it's just, it was, it, it was beautiful. And so all these events that have taken place in my life have become somewhat of the driving force of what I do. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, because again, you know, ministry wasn't some ministry wasn't a, a an, an upbringing goal. Mm-hmm. You know, that wasn't like it was a choice that was made for me before I made the choice. Mm-hmm. Coming to the desert. Now you're talking about your your mom praying, calling yeah, you a, well, a yeah, preacher. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and but you know even and yeah on that and then you know coming to the desert, I feel like that was a choice made for me before I made the choice and accepted yeah. it. So so I, I I'm. Can I you got, can you uh, talk about what you mean by that? Yeah, because for the, I, for the I, I think I, that, mean, I, I think I think for the listeners, it's yeah. it's um, you know, I, I think. Your life has to be driven by passion, mm-hmm. right? You got to be able to wake up every morning, be happy for what you do. Like, mm-hmm. because you, you go through storms and trials and tribulations, man. And if you don't love what you do, you're going to quit. Mm-hmm. It's it just what it is. And it's why you see people quit because it's a career, not a calling, mm-hmm. right? And it's the same thing with me in business. I never sat there and said, oh, I'm going to be a business person, Mm -hmm. just fell in my hands. So again, it chose me before I chose it. And I think that makes sense. This is why you have a passion for what you do. This is why you can endure past any circumstances that take place because you know that this wasn't your, this wasn't your choice before it was the choice presented to you. Mm -hmm. So I always tell God that, you know, God, this wasn't my choice. This was your choice mm-hmm. before it was mine. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're going to build the church. And then the same thing with business. You know, people ask me, how, how do you know you're going to be successful in business? Because it wasn't my choice. Pastor, when do you realize that? Because because I remember um, when I was in my 20s and I see a lot of people in their 20s that they, like you said earlier on the podcast, that when you're in your 20s, you feel like you could conquer the world. You feel unstoppable. Oh, you feel yeah. like you're in charge. It's oh, everything yeah. happens because of you. And, and and if it's gonna be, it's up to me oh, as yeah. a 20 year old. But when do you, at what age do you feel you realize that you look back and you say, it wasn't even my choice? Can I say something to that question? Because yeah. what's important is that because you, as you grow older, you almost, you see God more. Oh yeah. And as much as like as young, you might have desires, ambitions that are in you. Like what are all these things all about? I think as you grow older and mature, especially in God. So the maturity process can be somebody at 80 or it could be somebody at 30. Mm. But I think it's really maturity in God where you begin to look at life, not from just your mm. perspective, but understand his That's perspective. Yeah. That yeah. he's doing something through you. Yeah. And so then I think to me, the only way you really encounter true Christian humility is when you can look at life from his perspective and not yours. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about me anyway. Mm -hmm. So whatever God's done with you, it's beautiful, it's amazing. Some people can understand it, some people can't. Like people say, how can you do so much? And it's not about you, it's what God is doing through you. So I think it has more to do with with truly maturing in Christ, and then it's a place of humility where you're like, it's just not all about me. Yeah, you know, I always say, you know, I think think we're all aiming towards our self-image, but we we all started with an imagined self. Mm -hmm. right so that's kind of Mm -hmm. and i think you go through people Mm -hmm. to find who you are Mm -hmm. right um and i think that not having a father early on in my life i wasn't able to find obed the teenager because i didn't have someone that i can go through Mm -hmm. you know i look back at you know i look back at you know, the way I preach or the way I present things, the, the way I preach, and I can see my, that I went through so many people, right? I went through Benny Hinn, I went through Rod Parsley, I went through this person, I went through that person to finally discover me. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that this is why at, you know, in your 20s, th- 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 there's really not this clarity Mm -hmm. that what you're talking about Mm -hmm. about who i am because you're still discovering you Mm -hmm. right and i think that that's and then i and then i think when you finally get to that discovery you realize it was something you never thought of Mm. and you you you, if you listen Mm -hmm. to the greats they always say i i never thought i'd do this Mm -hmm. or i never thought i'd be this and I, there is a lot of truth to that statement yeah. because I don't think greats wake up and go, man, I'm, this is who I'm going to be. This is what I was born to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. I just think that there was this never ending 
discovery mm-hmm. of, of of finding who I am and realizing that what I thought I wanted to be was something completely different than what mm-hmm. God wanted me to be. Mm-hmm. Yep. I could Absolutely. not I don't think none of us at this table could sit here and go, wow, we could have scripted this, you know, and like, hit, no hit, you know, th- th- our, our lives are, are, are the way we, 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 we actually, you know, plan to do, you know, yeah. planned it out. Yeah. You know? I, I think there, I think that's why I really believe that scripture says, you know, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so true because we all have a plan. But eventually, the direction of the Lord will always supersede those. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's this discovery. And I mean, I see it in people. I see it in business people. I see people that say, I would never do this five years later. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing that. And I'm like, mm, I thought you told me you never do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think at the end of the day, it was their plan not to do it. But it was the direction ultimately the Lord was leading. Well said. Um, Going back to your dad just for a second. So obviously as a child, he was sort of there for you up to about 11. Although he stayed engaged through the teenage years, what did your relationship with your father look like as an adult? I know there was some healing. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of healing. Um, You know, I I shared a lot that, you know, Mm -hmm. we, you know, all of my family went to therapy. Um, We all uh, had a counselor, which was great. And then my father joined us, which was awesome. Um, and so the beauty about it, what, the, I always I often say this, you know, we were broken separately, but we were healed together. That's good. Mm-hmm. And um, and so yeah, Dad, you know, just he passed away a year ago. He just was a, I, you know, a, a sound, a sounding board of wisdom. Mm-hmm. You know, the older he got, the less he talked, but the more that he did. It's all he needed to say, mm-hmm. and um, so my 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 when my dad passed away, there was no regret. I mean, one of the last things I told him was, "You gave me life lessons that nobody would, nobody could have ever given to me, mm-hmm. no one, and you taught me what a comeback looks like." Yeah, mm. and so I I I. You know, I it's why I oh I I have this tenacity in believing for people, right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you know that you know what what may seem fatal isn't final, mm-hmm. for sure, right? Mm-hmm. And right. and some and they all come in church and it's like, man, you know, I'm just I'm I'm messed up and nothing, and it's like you're breathing, mm-hmm. you still have hope, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and 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 that is because you know I. I, I saw it firsthand. I experienced it firsthand, and I experienced how a, a family can be broken separately but healed together. Awesome, mm-hmm. that's beautiful. So then you met Pastor Lissette, right? Yeah. Talk, talk about how you met and how did the Lord lead you to that relationship? I, I think you mentioned two years that you yeah had. two years mm-hmm. I wasn't dating, and she was in the youth group. Lissette, you know, grew up in a great family. I always say, you know, my family was married with children. Hers was a Brady bunch, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and so. Um, you know, I, you know, she was just as pure as her hair, you know, blonde, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, there was obviously a lot of, um, you know, very early on, you know, this whole idea that, you know, I, I, I don't deserve someone like this. They're mm-hmm. just too good, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, and again, going over those things and, and, um, yeah, I didn't date for two years because the Lord told me the next girl you'll date be your wife. I thought that was crazy. Mm-hmm. But um, he goes, I need you to be whole because a broken person just breaks people, mm-hmm. you know. And so I did. And, and, um, and you know, and, and we, we dated for nine years. Yeah, we, we should have long... been, been married, you know, in, in four. But, you know, my, my career at that time had a big sudden change. So then I had to start all over again, yeah. and um, and you know in California, you know we don't have trailers, so. <laughs> <laughs> not like in North Carolina. So you can't you can't buy a house for fifty two thousand yeah. dollars. So so yeah. So and, and and to me it was I've always saw that her dad took care of the family, and that was a big very big priority to me. And so um, 
Yeah, so you wanted to get, have your finances in order before you married her. Is that was that yeah, the thought process? You know, or? I wanted to at least have finances. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know my finances in order, but at least just have some. <laughs> you know what I mean? My yeah. goal was I wanted to be close to being out of debt as possible. Yeah, and um, I felt like she didn't deserve inheriting my debt. Mm-hmm. You know, from school. So, um, so yeah, and that was the beauty about our relationship. We knew we were gonna get married. Like there there was, it, it eased everything. I remember, man, my, and I went to a Bible college. This is, this is wild, right? But my first year in Bible college, it, it was, it had other things, but it primarily a Bible college. Um, we had, I wanna say 20 men on our floor, something like that. And I think six of them, first semester got girls pregnant. Mm-hmm. So I was like, whoa, Bible college? <laughs> Help Jesus. Like, you guys are like this? You yeah. know? And I guess because I did all my dirt, you yeah, know, I yeah. was like, I'm not, I'm not into all that. But what really helped me was, was that I had a girlfriend. Um, we were going to get married. So it just made school easy. It made decisions easy. Probably about our third year is when we decided, hey, let's build an account together. Mm-hmm. And we did, and, 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 you know, we would, you know, give our 10% to the church, but then we would give 10% of each to that account. And that account just started growing and growing and growing. And we decided, Hey, we're going to pay off our debts. Um, and, um, and it's going to look around this time. And it was kind of around the time in which we, uh, would, would, would get married. And so, yeah watching again having a front row seat with everybody else and her family and you know and and friends you know this this was really the right way to go so yeah, that's awesome. yeah. so you've been married for how many years now 22 22 years and what are what are the i mean this is a loaded question right because yeah. I mean, you, you you could do uh seminars hours of seminars on this but what are what are the top um uh tips you have on on being married for so long. I mean, most, most, uh, not most, but, but, uh, I saw, I saw a statistic right here yeah. <clears throat> that I want to read to you. It says, it says, um, according to the U S census bureau, there's 2 million, 245,000 marriages in 2019 and 827, 827,000 of them, 27,000 of them ended up in divorce, which means that's 37% of marriages ended up in divorce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. So what are some of the things that you would say that are uh, practical things that have kept your marriage strong, healthy, and alive? I mean, you yeah. guys are a role model mm-hmm. uh, in, in yeah, too many. Yeah, one day at mm-hmm. a time, man. One day at a time. You know, mm-hmm. I my motto in my life is, my vision for my life, my motto for my life is, be a better version of yourself today than who you were yesterday. If I can improve every day as a father, improve every day as a husband, improve every day as a pastor, a leader, a person, a brother, then I won the day. Yeah. You know, I I think that we put often in our marriages these far reached goals. And then when we don't attain them, the devil begins to play with our mind like, well, then maybe this isn't working. Mm-hmm. Or maybe this isn't what you thought it would be. And, and sometimes you flirt with the grass that's greener on the other side. You know, at the end of the day, man, you know, my wife is my trophy. And I'm, what I mean by that is she's my greatest reward. Mm-hmm. And so, and she's also my greatest investment. You know, people should look at her when in my absence and just go, man, that woman is taken care of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and so. You know, my wife, you know, unlike every other, you know, area in our life, she doesn't have a budget and she shouldn't, you know, I mean, my wife's not going to mm. go out there and be dumb, but you know, she wants to get her hair done, get your hair done. You want to get your nails yep. done, get your nails done. You know, you want to get, you know, whatever, do whatever you got to do. Not for me, but you're my reward. Hmm. And so you being my reward is in my absence people should look at you and go whoever that woman's married to takes care of her mm-hmm. and so um and so and, and and then i think we have some principles you know lisette and i um you know um have some non-negotiables you know we spend a day a week with each other um 
we have an active date night every every week we leave we take a week every six weeks we take a weekend off just spend time with each other and then you know when it comes to vacation you know we've always um did two weeks and it was like one week with our kids one week by ourselves. Mm -hmm. and um you know so i it's, it's amazing how many couples have only had a vacation by themselves on their honeymoon yep and never had a vacation by themselves and, mm -hmm. and feel guilty about it like I just feel so guilty, man, because we're in Cabo and I wish my kids were here. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> For sure. Right, right. You know, and so so it's, um, you know, yeah, those are some things that were passed on to us that, you know, those are principles that we're passing on to our children. And, you know, absolutely. Hmm. So speaking as far as a father, um, what do you think some of the things that have helped you as a father as far as characteristics or principles in raising kids? You have two children, one boy, one girl. So... Um, Judah's, what, 13? Jaden is, I think, 15 or 16? 16. 16. Mm -hmm. What characteristics or principles have helped you as a father? Yeah, you know, I, again, I feel like, you know, we've had some incredible role models in our life, you know what I mean, that really have helped us and, um, and still do. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is I just want to be a part of their life. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we communicate a lot. You know what I mean? Um, my my son and my daughter have a unique relationship with me that's different than their mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and between mom and dad, there should never be a competition. There should we should actually we should actually um, applaud the distinction. Yeah, you compliment know? each other. Compliment yeah. each other, right? And so um, so you know, early on, my daughter was very latched to my wife you know and um and i think as she's growing up and she's starting to you know like guys and you know what what it's all about she's latched to me oh and, really okay and so what's interesting is is that um you know just a few days ago you know i her and her mom me you know me, me and my wife got home we were away and um and so my daughter's like hey i want to go to target you know, and you know, Dad, can you take me? And my wife was like, "Oh well, you know, what about me?" And 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 she was like, "No, I want Dad to take me." And and I could see it in my wife, and I'm like, "Oh man, you know." And I'm like, "Jaden, I think you need to let her come." You know what I mean? <laughs> but she wanted to have this conversation with me about oh, a guy. Okay. You know what I mean? And yeah. Like, Dad, you know, tell me about this, blah blah blah. So. You know, then I can see my son, who was very close to me growing up, is now starting to latch to my wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I just think you got to just stay involved in their lives. Um, always check their tanks, you know, and making sure they're, 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 you know, they're full. So I'm, I'm very intentional, man. I, if I'm away for a few days out of, out of the home, um, you know, when I come back, I, I, Hey guys, let's go get a, grab a burger, you know, let's just hang out, you know? Um, so that, that to me is, is, is important. Um, and again, that, that came through just, you know, mentors. Yeah. Now a lot of people are going to wonder how do you get your 15 year old daughter, 16, 16 year old daughter yeah. to talk to you about a boy that he likes? Yeah. I think for a lot of listeners, this that sounds a lot very foreign. Like, what did what are some of the things that you did? Obviously, you have a great relationship, open communication. How yeah. does she feel comfortable talking to you about that? Well, I think what have you? Done? I think I think you know we've established this principle in our home that we're all learners mm -hmm. and nobody has arrived. And I'm always driving to my children. Your greatest advice comes from people who have experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not necessarily people who are going through it with you. So your friends are gonna give you poor advice. Mm. Like I'm talking poor <laughs> advice, okay? <laughs> and, and what I mean by that is they're gonna be biased. Yeah. They're gonna tell you what you wanna hear, not what you need to hear. And thirdly, they have no experience. So if you're going to them, yeah then you're gonna end up on the wrong side of, uh, of a relationship. Yeah, when good. you ought to come to me or you ought to come to your mom because not only do we have a great relationship, but we're trusted to help people with theirs. Mm -hmm. And if people are coming to us, trusting us to help them with their relationship, mm -hmm. it should be 
easy for you for sure. to come to us and go, man, I, 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 I like this guy. Dad, what do you think I should do? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, well, logically that makes sense. Okay. That's, it does. That's, that's a perfect, like a 16 year old or even a 12 year old would listen to that and say, yeah, dad, you're right. But there's more to it. There's the the emotional. The the she feels comfortable yeah. enough yeah. to actually do it, though, because lo- logic is one thing, but to actually do it is is like you, you must have this friendship, this bond. Well, that yeah, you I mean, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I I think it started off by saying, you know, you got to be personally involved in your kids' yeah. lives. For sure. You know, um, you know, our motto of of our children, and they know this is. We're training them up to be great adults. Yeah. We're not yeah. training them up to be great children. We're training them up to be great adults. So, we will let them make decisions. A, a, a prime example was this, you know, past weekend, right? My my daughter, we were out of town, and she wants to go to this house party, and I'm like, oh God, I I I, I, I know what happens at these <laughs> things, you know? Yeah. And um, so you know, she's like, you know, Dad, I I I I. I know, and, da, 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 and I'm going with my friends, and I, I know who's throwing in, and I'm asking her every question. So I said, well, hey, you know what? Let's sleep on it, come back tomorrow. I'll, I'll talk to you about that. So she calls me. I said, all right, well, tell me where you're at. Well, I still want to go. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, then let me, let, me, let me tell you what you need to be aware of. And I said, okay, number one, you go buy a bottle of water, and don't let anyone bring you anything to drink. Mm-hmm. Number two, as soon as you walk in the house, you look for the exits. Where are my exits at? And you stand as close to the exit as you can, and you don't leave that exit, right? You're always looking around over people's shoulders, different things like that. And I said, look it, I don't want you to go because I kind of know what happens at these mm-hmm. things, but obviously it's an itch that you need to scratch. Right. Mm-hmm. And I gotta let you do this. Mm-hmm. Like I've been here 20, two years in the desert. I've never gone to Coachella. Mm-hmm. Never. I've never been. I've had no desire. Mm-hmm. Now, I've had VIP. I've had just never desired. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, she's 16. She's like, I want to go to Coachella. <laughs> and I'm like, my 13 year old said, I want to go to Coachella. And I'm like, what? I'll be and your chaperone. hundred <laughs> percent, right? Yeah. And so my wife and I decided, okay, well, if you're, they're going to go. We're going to take them. And I don't know what I'm going to do there. I'll probably <laughs> grab a lounge chair. Bring my take a nap. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know these bands. I don't yeah. even care about this stuff, right? But it, my, my children will look back and go, Dad, I remember when you took us to Coachella. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't even want us to go. But you know what, Dad? Because, man, you just... You're the coolest, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, Dad, yeah. you, you took that. us, right? Yeah. And I think that it's just, you know, when when we when Jaden was born, the first thing I told the church was, you're not gonna raise my child. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? So I I I I'm I love all you guys. I love how you guys are gonna contribute to her life, but she's our child. Mm-hmm. Right. For sure. And and mm-hmm. my daughter's not gonna live in this glass house, right. you know, and 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 take on a um a burden that they don't deserve no kid can yeah. bear no and they can't they're, they're they didn't say yes we said yes so yeah. hold us accountable mm-hmm. but don't hold my kids correct mm-hmm. so can i say something like that real quick yeah because trust me with the pk thing it's never ending and i always tell people like do your kids make mistakes mm-hmm. like i can go through everybody's lives and i know everybody makes mistakes and so are ours as well ours are yeah. not expected to be perfect and right. so like in defense of guys in ministry it's challenging. Like, mm-hmm. if you went through the list of what people expect of guys in ministry, like, oh, you're a pastor, that means da 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 It's impossible. It's impossible. And so none of us here are perfect, and our kids will not be perfect. I'm not yeah. perfect, and as Bishop said, God called us, not necessarily our kids. Yeah, 100%. And so you got to give, if, if, the way I always look at, like, grace and mercy is I always want to give plenty of it because I know I'm going to need it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, even for, like, mm-hmm. anybody else's kids at whatever, mm-hmm. if they mess up, I want to give them grace. I want to give them mercy, right? Yeah. I want to forgive them and then give them favor that they'll do better in the future. Yeah. So I'm not highly judgmental. But the same grace and mercy I'm giving to others, I'm expecting them for my house as well. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I've Makes never sense. once told my kids. I've never told once my son. I've never told once my daughter. Hey man, you guys are gonna take over destiny. <laughs> Never. I've watched, I've watched pastors put this pressure on their kids, mm-hmm. and it 
they crashed. Mm -hmm. And not only does it come, I mean, I'm just, I'm, 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 I don't know anything about that, but I'm pretty sure it also comes, that pressure comes from the congregation oh, of to the kids. So they're getting the pressure from all 100%. these sides. And so, and so, and so I try to sit there and do my best to diffuse all that, mm -hmm. right? Like you don't have to live under that pressure. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to go That's to good. Coachella this year. People are going to see me from Destiny, <laughs> and they're going to be like, Pastor, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm here with my daughter, and I, I'm teaching her how to come here. Yeah. I'm teaching her, you know, what to expect when you go to events like this, because the only comfort I'm going to get when she's 21 years old and she's going with her friends is I trained her. Yeah. yeah. I can yeah. trust my training, mm -hmm. but I can't trust her. Mm-hmm. And so, so I feel like this is something I need to do. One of our mentors is Ed and Lisa Young. And, and if you know anything about their kids, they are models. Mm -hmm. And he, I, I, Ed was so criticized, you know, by so many people because things that his children did and he participated, mm -hmm. like going to a concert. Mm -hmm. So he come from Southern Baptist. And... <laughs> They look now, and you could see all the kids that were had to be, you know, were forced to go into ministry. You're going to go to Bible college. We're going. We're going to look at colleges this summer. I told my daughter. I said, "Where do you want to go, Dad? Th th these are the schools I'm looking at. N except USC, none of them were my choices. Mm -hmm. I would rather you go to GCU, TCU, SMU." Oh, Liberty. Mm -hmm. She's like, I ain't going there. And I'm going, man, Jesus, help me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, am I going to put a pressure on her mm. that I've just worked so hard so that no one else can? Mm -hmm. She has to come into her own. She has to discover who she is. For sure. All I can do is guide her. Mm -hmm. That's all I can do. That's good. And I, I don't. Now. My kids love the church. They love the church. I'm pretty sure they'll serve the church in whatever capacity. Yeah. But I've never told my son, man, I want you to be the pastor of destiny. Mm -hmm. Right. No, man, if God calls, I can't call you. Mm -hmm. Only God can. For sure. That's it. Yeah. So so talking about the, the scrutiny that that pastor ed young got for doing that i mean i'm sure you've gotten a lot of scrutiny throughout the years for a lot of things that destiny church does things a certain oh, way yeah. or whatever um so if we could change gears a little bit how do you deal with with haters with people that are that are that are always going to say something negative how, how have you dealt with that throughout the years because i think um as a man we have to we have to know that that it doesn't matter what anybody says what matters is my in my relationship with god my wife that my kids are good how is it how do you become that man yeah uh, what, no. what have you done or what how and do you again, deal with that going mm -hmm. back to ed young mm -hmm. he said something at a conference and i'm telling you i've heard the greatest preachers or at least some of the greatest preachers and i've heard some of the greatest messages when he said this statement, there was this silence of about, you know, 6,000 people. You could hear the air conditioning units. That's how quiet it got. And he said this about haters, and it changed my whole life. And it changed everybody. He says, I've never met an integral hater. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met one. That's good. Here's the bottom line. Haters are bitter. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. Yeah. And who's going to have the integrity? The hater or the one they're hating on? And I choose integrity. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, what comes out of their mouth is a revealer of their heart and their mm -hmm. hearts are toxic and their hearts are poison. Mm -hmm. So I give no credence or mm -hmm. no ear. I'm telling you, people will come up to me and say, oh, Pastor Obad, man, you know, this person said this, this, or, you know, these people are saying this. And I'm like, oh, wow, I, I, I know that. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, 
you know, just don't pay attention to it. <laughs> yeah. Because here's why. Haters don't have integrity. Yeah. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Okay? I've never met an integral hater. Mm -hmm. Never. I've never met someone who has integrity and hates at the same time. Never. So am I going to give them credence? Am I going to give them reason? Now, we're celebrating 20 years as a church. It's amazing that there's been a lot of reflection. I probably would sit there and say what probably hurts the most is the people you've helped the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they're, they're the ones that go on a, on a rant. Mm -hmm. Because they'll take one situation yeah. and forget about the one hundred that you yeah. helped them That's with, true. right? And then, and then I have to remind myself, they're they don't at this moment right now, they're not acting out of integrity. Mm -hmm. And so I'll give them a gray space. I'm good. There's nothing for me to hate because when I know I've done this one hundred things to help them to get where they're at today, yeah, what am I going to hate on? Yeah, they're they're just bitter. For sure. And I think, as they say, haters, what do they do? They hate. Right? Yeah. So you can't listen to them for too long. Mm -hmm. And if you always try to play the people that are, I don't know, that always see the bad in everything, you'll never make progress. You'll, do, you'll never do anything great. You'll be stuck trying to please those kind of people. So generally, I think it's best to ignore the haters. Yeah. Yeah. Love and, them, but you just ignore them. And you know, here's the bottom line. People don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, um, I had a situation come up. Um, a year ago, I think this is the last one I dealt with, and I let this person just continue to talk because I, you know, I'm like, all right. And this one person came up to me, oh my god, this thing they're saying, da, 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 all this kind of stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh okay, <laughs> all right, you know, yeah, you know, he's just spreading all these lies, and I mean, he's, you know, he, he, he you know, he's saying all these things, and I mean, it's true, and it's true what he's saying, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So this one person was adamant that it was true. Yeah. And her and her little group. <laughs> so <laughs> I just kind of They build a little team yeah, up. They always do. They they always always do right? Well, you know, so did Judas, right? Yeah. He didn't come to Jesus by himself. That's good. And so next thing you know, I I, I said, you know, so I saw this person one day and I said, Hey, um, hey, in regards to that situation, um, do you have a minute? And she was like, well, you know, I, I don't know if I can believe what you're going to say. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to say anything. I'm, I'm going to get a person on the phone. You fine with that? She's like, yeah. So I land up getting this person on the phone. And this person starts telling her the situation. Oh, so, yeah, so let me tell you about this situation. And he starts telling her. And he's like, actually, I needed destiny to help me so i was like hey guys you can stay in this building as long as you guys want because i need you to stay here mm -hmm. because my building has to show a 50 percent occupancy and you guys are taking up the whole floor so i don't want you guys to pay rent i just need you to be here so that i can get qualified for this sba loan mm -hmm. guys you should have saw this person's face and everything inside of me man wanted to just like you <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wanted, I wanted, wanted to, to grill them, bro. Huh? I wanted to cream her so bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm telling you, and all I, when we were done, she just looked at me. I mean, she had this eyes. And I said, let me tell you something. You know what the, you know what the thermostat always is? What the thermometer always is? It's integrity. The person you're, the person you're talking to is sleeping with a woman outside of marriage. Is that integrity? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, your life is going through some things that don't have integrity. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. And the person was like, <laughs> and I said, and when you question somebody that has integrity, you should at least give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, and this person who just told you what happened, now, if you're integral, Mm -hmm. you'll go back to every person you talk to and say man I was wrong mm -hmm. do you think that person did it 
course not. Let me say something too. And one thing I have observed with you, Pastor Bed, is you always walk with a grace. Like, and by, by yeah. grace, I mean like a favor and a kindness toward people. And and I think of like you know, like what Jesus did. So Jesus allowed Judas, yeah. who would eventually betray him, <laughs> and was all along robbing from him. Yeah. Like, so the one who knew everything said, "Yeah, Judas, walk with me for three years." He could have kicked him out after like month two when he figured out the guy's robbing money for everybody. Hundred percent. And Jesus didn't. Mm-hmm. And Jesus knew there would come a day where he'd kiss him in a garden to betray him with a kiss of death. Jesus knew that and let Judas walk with him. And so, you know, in dealing with people, you have to walk with grace. And oh, honestly, yeah. mm-hmm. you, you, Pastor Ben, you've been a great example of this, to show people grace even though they, they're they going to hurt you. Mm-hmm. And still love them and allow them to participate and be a part. I mean, it's easy. Yeah. Like a lot of people, why do you just kick that person out and get rid of the goats? You know, and Jesus even said, like, I'm not going to kick out the goats right now. I'm no, going to let them grow 100%. together. I'll let the weeds and the the, tear go, the wheat and the tear grow together. Like mm-hmm. until the time, then they'll be separated. And so, I think it's about also walking with grace That's when you're good. interacting with people, um, dealing with people, especially in ministry. And it's the thing of like just showing grace, like showing doing grace. what Jesus would do. And yeah, they might hurt you down the road, and yet I'm still going to show grace. A hundred percent. And to me, I always, I always say, Obed, err on the side of integrity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just err on yeah. the side of integrity. Yeah. That's good. And and what I just tell people all the time is, listen, let me tell you something about leaders. Okay, let me tell you about your leader. Let me tell you about leaders when they come to me. I said, let me just tell you this. You will you will leaders are misunderstood until you finally understand. Yeah. You have to learn to live with what you may not know about them. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if they drive a nice car or they go on vacation here, whatever it, whatever may be bothering you, you don't know everything about them. Right. For what sure. they've and been so, through. So the best thing yeah. you can do is don't allow this front row seat that God gave you to this leader get blinded by something that is just misunderstood. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's good. Go to that person and say, man, I'm struggling with this. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. And they'll tell you, you know? And so, you know, one of the things that Joel taught me, you know, um, and if you hear Joel often speak. Osteen. Osteen, yeah. yeah. You know, he'll always talk about, he does a lot of stories. Mm-hmm. And often it's about his family. And I remember being at his house and when I was on the board and, and, and he said, you know, the reason why I joke around about my brother you know, we have this yeah. this stuff going on, him and Paul. And I share these stories about my families because 46,000 people will never be with us at a dinner table. Mm-hmm. But yet every person that goes to Lakewood feels like they know the Osteens mm-hmm. because he just tells them about his family. He tells them about his victories. He tells them about his defeats. He tells them about his fears. And it taught me that, Obed, you know, you need to talk about your victories. You need to talk about your struggles. Yeah. You need to talk about, you know, hey, you need to mention I'm I'm in business. Yeah. You know, so that when they see you drive this nice car, they're like, oh, he ain't robbing the church. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But if you you want the goal is yeah. to me is get people to understand. And I think that that's something that has always always stuck with me because you get preachers that go that preach for an amen. There's some people that preach for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I think the greatest preach for people to understand. Mm. So that the goal of this sermon is when you walk out, you understand. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Not, wow, that was so deep, man. That was historically incredible, you know? (laughs) Profound. That's nothing. What is that? What what am I going to apply that to? So, So I think that goes along with the whole fact of, Okay, people talk about you because you're misunderstood until they mm-hmm. admit they understand. Well, then do your part by getting them to understand. Mm-hmm. Going back to Perfect. fathers for a second, what about some uh, problems, pitfalls you've seen fathers make? How can they be avoided? It's like looking over life, you've done ministry for quite a while, perspective on giving advice to fathers. I think I, I, I would sit there and say that the, the biggest thing I've seen is I've seen more fathers put their value in their work Mm. outside of their home than the value of work in their home. They want to be validated, Mm. right? I go to work, I get up every morning, I'm putting a roof over your head. 
well, sir, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what the yeah. Bible says. The Bible says a man's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. He says, man, the word says, man, the word goes as far as saying a man who doesn't provide for his home is worse than an unbeliever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you, you – and so they feel like if I'm going to work every day and I'm working hard and I'm putting a roof over my head, I don't really need to put in the work in the home. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. No, no, no. Your first ministry That's is good. the work in your home. Mm -hmm. Your first your first job is is in your home. And so I'm always checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Hey man, Obed, and I, I you know, there's times I you know I go for a run and I'll say, I just wish they would appreciate that I work so hard, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But then I realize yeah. no one I'm supposed to. Yeah. I'm supposed yeah. to do this. That's not something that needs to be validated by them. Maybe I just need to spend a little bit more time with them. And I think the biggest pitfall I see in men is they put more enthusiasm, more of their effort and energy in the work outside their home That's than good. the work inside. Mm -hmm. And then you, you obviously see the repercussions. Definitely. So I I uh, esteem you a lot, Pastor Obed. I mean, um, the 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 things you do and the I mean, how do you have time for for all of this? You know, like how do you as a as a man that wants to provide in a big way for for your family, for your wife? How do you how do you manage your time? How do you what is your time management? I mean, yeah. you're gonna be here for I don't know for maybe 15, 20 more minutes, but or less. But um, how do you how did you put this into your agenda on top of your business on top of your you know being a father mm -hmm. a husband running a church that has been successful for now for 20 years um you're a very important pillar in the community mm -hmm. how how do you manage your time basically That's yeah, what well, first of all I, I i i say this all the time i don't and that's what i teach ceos man you don't manage time you manage discipline mm -hmm. okay that's that's very important, right? That's good. So I don't. I wouldn't sit there and say, "Man, oh man, I manage my time. I manage my discipline." Mm -hmm. So I'm up every morning mm. at three thirty. It doesn't matter what time zone I'm on. So I'm up every morning at three thirty. Um, and I don't wake up early because I I love it. I wake up early because I have no distractions. No one's going to call me. No one's going to text me. No one wants something from me. I know once six o'clock hits, my kids get up, they want something. My wife gets up, she wants her coffee. You know what I mean? And so it gives me really two and a half hours and it's really all I need, you know, to respond to emails, think, create, put notes together for my meetings. Um, and I feel by 5.30, I am... I am equipped for the day, you know, That's good. Uh, prepared and, um, you know, my devotions, my study time. And then um, what I do, what I've learned. And again, from from the greats is I've learned to manage my days. So not my time, my day. So Mondays to me is content day. It's all content. I study for the message. I study for myself. I study for future messages. I listen to some messages. It's a content day, right? Tuesdays are, you know, and, and you know, Tuesdays are really, you know, staff, church staff, you know, stuff like that. Wednesdays is film, you know, service. Thursdays discipleship. But then, you know, also have. The, my company, right? So it's a, you know, I have eight o'clock in the morning, stand up every Monday with our team. I have a nine o'clock with the executive team. So I kind of know everything that's going on. Which your um, company is a startup, which is yeah. building from the ground up, right? Yeah. yeah, it's building from the ground up. It's, you know, as of yesterday, it's uh, 79 employees. Nice. In a year, what, a there year, a year, man, right? So that's awesome. It's a little scary. You know what I mean? Right? So, a lot of cash burn. Yeah, it's a lot of burn right now. <laughs> but, you know, and, and, and so, um, and again, I, I, you know, and again, my role as a, if you'd want to call it a chairman, a senior pastor, whatever you want to call it, leader, it really is just to be, to let people spread their wings. Right and not get intimidated or insecure about it. No, man. Everybody has a gift. 
your table should be big enough where everyone can eat. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I tell people all the time, man. And so 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 that my week is is a very disciplined week, right? So by Wednesdays, my message for Sundays are done. So just think about it, man. I don't have to think about you know Thursday, Friday, you know. So I spend a lot of time Thursday following up with all the grab stuff that's going on, following up meetings, any meetings I need to be into. And then Fridays are kind of my day, man, where I just spend it with Lisette. It's kind of our Sabbath in some degree. Um, and I try not to have any meetings on that day. And then Saturday is just a time I spend with my kids. You know, we always try to do something together or go to dinner that Friday night as a family. And um, and then Sunday's church, man. And, and um, so we... Um, and then I use my Sunday nights. I don't, I used to do a lot of gatherings, man. And, and, you know, but I, I realized that if I can start Sunday night and have, can, you know, lay out the plan for the week, I'm going to be a lot prepared Monday morning waking up. Yeah. Gatherings so, as in team gatherings. Well, yeah, or? I used to do all kinds of gatherings. So what I would do now is like when we have leadership, you know, I'm like, let's just do it at lunch. Right, so after church, let's do it at lunch so that I have my evenings. Mm -hmm. I can go home, take a nap, wake up, and then go, okay, Obed, what does your week look like? And so I, I put it all together. What are the what are the meetings I need to have? What are the what are the follow ups that I need I need to do? And um, and so I really wake up Monday not twiddling my thumbs, going, Oh, what am I supposed to do today? Yeah. I know exactly what I need to do. Mm -hmm. What is your what is your driving force to to your to the passion that you have towards what you do? Because you're you're, um, I mean you're you're all all in. You're, yeah. You're very driven. You are. You have you have a an extreme work ethic. I mean you're always doing something. And if you could probably if you had another day you would add another business or something yeah, else. 100%. I mean you do Bible studies uh, maybe every every morning of the week probably yeah. uh, that that I plug into your Thursday mornings one mm -hmm. what is your driving force to all that what what's you know, the main I, thing what's I, the ultimate I think I think my driving force man mm -hmm. is I just want to be a better person today than who I was yesterday mm -hmm. that's it I I, yeah. I, feel, I figure I always always text my son one percent better and he you know that's good he'll text me back yeah dad yeah and i'm always reminding him just one percent better son if you can get one percent better every day by the end of the year you're gonna be 365 percent better than what you were last year so it's that driving force to me mm -hmm. is i just want to be better i want to be better today than who i was yesterday and that's it i don't have no timelines i don't have you know these massive goals i don't have that i just want to be one percent better every day that's nice. it cool. so to me that's something that drives me because um it allows you to 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 stay hungry when you're still when you're still fed nice very good i guess we can start coming to a close is there any advice you'd give to fathers specifically Listen to this podcast. Come on, Come on now. Right? I, agree. So, I agree. No, I, I, I just think, listen, we're all training, mm -hmm. right? There, 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 you know, as I always say, there was never a book that was given to us to say, hey, man, here's your child or here's your wife. Now, man, you know, go, go out and be a, I think it's, 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 it's hard enough to be a husband. And then now you top that on being a father. For sure. Okay. And then you top that off. Now I got to go out and fulfill a career. You know, that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure men have. Men internalize a lot of things because they're just afraid to ask. But you're one ask away from really getting a breakthrough that you need. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, you know, listening to a podcast like this is is just getting lessons you don't have to go through. Yeah. And if you can have that, then you're going to avoid a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. and you're going to avoid a lot of debt. Yeah. And I think that's the advice I'd give. You know, they Thank say you. one thing. So America, they say as a whole, is the number one country for single parent homes. Mm -hmm. So of all the almost 200 countries in the world, America has the most single parent homes. And so one of the things I always try to tell the fathers and wives, et cetera, like keep, try to stay together to the best of your ability and be there for your kids so you can raise them. Well, the rate, the rate we're going today of, of not having children that's true too right our mm -hmm. infrastructure is going to be a 
it's going to be crazy in the next few years. Yeah, we're looking at a population collapse. And yeah. people don't even realize, like, uh, one of the things I always try to tell people, like, the enemy always wants to tell you kids are a burden, don't have kids, get rich, get whatever, do everything else. But the Bible's very clear that every child's a blessing. Yeah, 100%. And so as Christian people, they're like, what about a bad world? What about this? I said, it doesn't matter. You have children. Right. Children are your greatest blessings. That's like, it. As far as if you have billions of dollars and yachts and 25 homes and have no kids to celebrate with, what's the point of that mm -hmm. life? And so to any person, like, get married, have kids, like, have as many kids as you can because truly it is a blessing to be a father. And it's a blessing I, to have children. I was on a call yeah. a few days ago. I'm going to meet this guy in San Francisco, billionaire. And um, he is putting together his, you know, his... Um, his uh, donor advisory fund and putting together his uh, uh, kind of like where his money will go. No kids. Ooh. The question that was asked to him was, why don't you have kids? And his response was, was, you know, he goes, I'm just being honest. He goes, man, I, I, it would got, it got in the way. It would have gotten in the way. Hmm. Of, 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 of the path I was on. And he goes, and now I look back and I've gained the world, but I got no one to leave it to. Mm. I mean, it was powerful, right? Wow. And they got into the whole population thing. And, 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 and that's what I was alluding to was that fathers are gonna be a rarity. For sure. Okay, we're talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about an infrastructure collapse mm -hmm. amongst this nation not mm -hmm. having babies. For sure. Which no one's talking about. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, fathering's gonna be a rarity here. Mm -hmm. And so um so count it as a blessing, man. Mm -hmm. For and sure. We have legacy. For sure. So and I know there's a lot more to talk about, Pastor, but um maybe we could do this again Thank sometimes. You for having me, man. It was <laughs> a joy. It was Appreciate an honor. It. Thank you so much, Pastor. All right, thanks. Thanks.